Hello everyone from Tokyo. I'm Hitoshi Utsunomiya, director of Japan Sake and Soju Makers Association. We thank you very much for joining the program today. And I also would like to thank Japan House London for this wonderful opportunity. Let me introduce our organization, the JSS, briefly. JSS was founded in 1953. In Japan, there are about 1,500 sake breweries and 300 shochu distilleries. And nearly all of them are members of our association. So on behalf of our member producers, our aim is to introduce the joy of sake and shochu to people all over the world. I know the pandemic is still strongly interfering our lives. But we hope that your discoveries of sake and shochu from this webinar could contribute to some enjoyment in your everyday life. Please enjoy the program. Thank you. We thank Mr. Utsunomiya for kindly making this address. Thank you very much indeed for working with Japan House London on these events. Uh, we are very excited about uh, today and the two coming up in the future. I would like to next welcome Yoshitake Rie, who is the UK liaison of the Japan Sake and Shochu Makers Association, the JSS. And, and she will give us a, an introduction to the fundamentals of sake. So Yoshitake Rie is the UK liaison of the Japan Sake and Shochu Makers Association and the UK representative of the Sake Samurai Association, an organization formed by young sake brewers in Japan to promote sake in overseas markets. In her role, she has been instrumental in organizing the world's largest sake competition at the International Wine Challenge, and Rie is currently spearheads a series of sake campaigns at Japanese embassies, major universities, and international corporations across Europe and the UK. Good morning, Yoshiteka san, and welcome. Thank you so much for joining us today. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. Long time no to see you. Indeed, it has been a while. Um, you're in London, yes? Uh, yes, I am. As I am, and we are in lockdown at the moment. Uh, is everything yeah. okay? Are you, everybody, everything is fine? Yes, very well. Wonderful, thank you so much indeed. I understand you'll be giving us an introduction to sake. Yes, uh, thank you very much, yes. Wonderful. If I can hand over to you, um, okay. I, 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 can, I will stay on. So if you need to... Um, yeah, stay with me. And uh, just before I change to my slide, and uh, hello everybody, and uh, thank you for joining me. And especially for those uh, who know nothing or very little about sake, it would be my great pleasure to introduce the foundation and the fundamental thing about sake. As you know, in the Western world, sadly, the sake is widely misunderstood, but you know, sake is such a wonderful, really wonderful drink especially so unique and versatile. So today my aim is to show you how, become, how to become a friend with the sake. So I have about 10 minutes to start um, to share the screen. See you later, Simon-san, stay with me. Okay, I'll stay with you, thank you. And okay. I'm going to not, <laughs> okay. Right, so, um, Introduction of sake. So let's start, what is sake? So as you know, the sake is um, Japan's national drink, which we have a history of about, over 2000 years. And uh, as Utsunomiya-san said, we have about 1,400 sake breweries and actually produced 20,000 different brands. In Japan, we call it sake as Nihonshu, means Japanese sake. And then we <clears throat> obtained the uh, geographical indication GI in 2015. So, um, but the sake is not only for Japanese people now, we are exporting widely all over the world. So here we are today. And uh, I just wanted to mention Many people still think sake is like a spirit, very you know, alcoholic horror, but sake is just like a wine and a beer, 
and the alcohol average is only 15 or 16, a slightly higher than wine, okay? So um, Japan, obviously the Japanese sake has a deeply rooted into the Japanese people's culture. If I quickly go through, for example, New Year, even the youngest child have a little sip from the, you know, shared by the God. And after that, if you are lucky, you get married. And, uh, you know, at the wedding, you exchange three times of the sake cups to make the uh, husband and a wife. And you might have seen so many um, celebrations, we break open the barrel. So this is another thing we always celebrate by opening the barrel and bring the luck. And of course you heard about Kampai, we shouted in the end, all together. This is kind of a symbol of a friendship and the solidarity of the society. So let's go through what sake is made from. Everybody knows sake is rice wine. So it means rice and with water. Japan is blessed with the rice and water full of lots of soft water. But just putting together doesn't make sake. We need some help of the microorganism. That is the very important part of the sake making. And we use something called koji. It's a magical mold. And when you look at the sake making process, just a bit of a chart, rice needed to be changed first into the sugar. That's called sakarification, but that is by the aid of koji. And after changing to the sugar, we ferment it just like a wine in the use the yeast, then become sake. Something very unique about this one, uh, sake making is, it is called multiple parallel fermentation. All those actions uh, happening in the same tank, as you can see on the right side. So this is the only unique sake, I mean the face, okay? So looking at the sake making and the comparing to the wine, if the wine is made by the nature and the, by the God, sake is the art created by the hand of the man. So it is actually true craftsmanship. But anyway, we are going to visit the sake maker later and see it in your eyes, okay? Um, here, I have to mention a little bit complicated soundedly. It's called rice polishing ratio. Because you may see this figure on the label and they're frightened, oh my goodness, it's like a 50% is alcohol. No, this is not alcohol. This is the percentage of the how rice has been milled, polished. Because it's so important to make a grade of the uh, sake and a style, a category of sake. So you can look at the uh, grain itself. Outer part is actually unwanted for the sake uh, making and we need to reach the starch inside. So we need to polish down the sake grain. And this is the after that category will be decided. The more you polish, normally the finer sake becomes, and we call it premium sake, tokute meisho shu in Japanese. And likewise, ginjo, daiginjo, honjozo, the names are decided. But this one, again, you will see it later at the sake maker. Sake, as I said, such a versatile drink. So we have so many styles of sake in the market. It's not only one taste. I, I really want you to love to taste many of those. First of all, sparkling sake, just like a champagne. This is becoming really popular. And uh, also nigori sake on the right, cloudy sake. I mean, with a uh, sake leaves inside. It's very robust and punchy, nice sake. And on the left bottom, 
we call it koshu, aged sake. This is kind of a, a bit contradiction, I must say, because sake, different from wine, it is usually, it's good to drink early, not to wait too long, but there are some sake which can last. So these are made at the breweries and the one year, two years, and the dark it becomes with the age. So the right bottom uh, one is 20 years old sake called aged sake. Then after that, we still, we have a dessert sake like a plum sake or yuzu sake. I'm sure you have heard of it. Um, how to enjoy sake? For example, at home, we are during the lockdown. It is the perfect time for us to enjoy sake, okay? Sake is actually anytime you drink. Many people ask, when shall we drink sake? Anytime, just like a wine, when you feel like during the day on its own, also with the meals as well, and at restaurants and at home. Well, this is the greatest subject to talk about sake temperature because sake is the uniquest drink which can be enjoyed at a different temperature. Many people still drink, especially older generation think sake needs to be drunk warm or hot. Well, yes and no, because sake can be drunk at a different temperature. For example, Chilled sake, very cold sake. Sometimes you, you can put the ice on the rock or room temperature and warm or winter, I mean the autumn. And like this winter, we could have hot sake. When you make it sake at home, you just boil the hot water and put the uh, sake into the carafe or something like that. And you just bathe it. So it's like a sake bath. In five minutes, you will have a very nice warm sake. So how to drink sake at home, you would ask. There are so many beautiful vessels if you want to find, as you know, masu, wooden one. It's very difficult to drink though. And all those glass, um, of course, these small things are very traditional Japanese way to drink, especially when you want to share with other people. But at home, it is perfectly all right to use the wine glass. And in fact, read wine glass has been already in the market, but just to use any kind of uh, wine glass, okay? So my favorite subject, sake beyond the sushi. The reason why I'm saying is, again, many people still think sake is only good with Japanese food or with, with the sushi, but sake has incredible um, uh, power almost to go with any kinds of food, more than wines, because wine has a lot of acidity and also tanning, which can be a very, you know, difficult element with the food. So that's why sommelier needs to work very hard. But sake has a lot of amino acid to forgive the food matching. So sake doesn't fight with food. Let's just quickly see how it works. Obviously, oysters and the seafood and a bit salty stuff it's a very good. So, you know, seafood is a match in the, I mean, the match made in heaven. Everybody knows. Then, wow, meat. How could we drink sake with meat? And it is quite amazing. But for example, like we test it with mustard wines, our fish and the chips is perfect with such something like a sparkling sake. And also, full bodied uh, sake, like an aged sake or jumai, is really good with the roast beef and refreshing honjozo with a, our favorite Indian food. So, you know, it can be very versatile. And the cheese is another thing. Cheese has a lot of uh, lactic acid as well as sake, which really matches well. Of course, soft cheese, strong cheese, you can play with a 
sake, but um, they are the becoming an interesting subject and even somebody is teaching about it. And of course, sweet, as we said, like uh, plum sake or yuzu sake or even nice uh, daiginjo can go with the chocolate or sweet. So I might suggest that you could have a wonderful Valentine day with um, chocolate and uh, sake. Sake is not for just drinking. To me at home, sake is the best company for me to do cooking because it gives a lot of um, uh, umami and also remove the fishiness and even soften the ingredients. For example, my favorite is bongole to splash the sake when you put the bongole and uh, karage, I marinate with the sake. And of course, when you buy sake, there are many ways to enjoy and you can mix with the other uh, alcohol, making something like a sake tini. But um, on the right, my, this is my picture I took the other day. It's called tamago sake. This is a very Japanese traditional hot eggnog to make yourself very warm and feel really, I mean, the, especially when you feel cold or, you know, coughing, tamago sake works very well. You can Google it and uh, see how it made, okay? And very end, if I can talk about it, I, it takes hours, but it's a, sake is again, has been regarded the best medicine um, because it has a lot of um, good enzyme and amino acid, as I said before. It helps to uh, your organ function better, like a liver or a heart. So people drink moderately, let's say one or two cups a day, can even live longer. And of course, it's really good for moisturizing and hydrate your skin. So, you know, some people use sake directly on the face. So here is all about it. And uh, I just wanted to say thank you very much and um, keep safe, keep warm, keep enjoying sake. Okay, and thank you so much for inviting me, Simon. Oh, it's our pleasure. Thank you so much indeed, Yoshitake-san. Uh, for a novice like me uh, on, on, of sake, mm -hmm. uh, lots of interesting information. I always get confused about ginjo, dai ginjo, to my... Bet. Uh, and, and the polishing ratios. Um, and I can see that a lot of questions are coming in for already. you. Already. You've stimulated a lot of interest already. So thank you very much. What we will do, everybody, is we will we will um, address those questions at the end of the session. All right. So, thank you very much indeed, Yoshitake-san. Um, see we'll, you later. We will see you later. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. So next, um, I would like to introduce uh, Chris Hughes who is joining us from Tokyo uh, in Japan, from, in fact, Nippori in, in, in Tokyo. Uh, wonderful, Chris. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, it's wonderful to see you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. No problem. So Chris, for everybody, Chris is a, is a certified sake educator for the Wine and Spirit Education Trust in London. He is currently teaching the Level 3 certification in sake at Kaplan in Tokyo. And since moving to Japan in 2014, he has visited over 100 breweries and he is a co-host of the Sake On Air podcast. Well, thank you very much for joining us. It's much appreciated. Thank I was you, thank you. interested that you were in your body as well as um, once upon a time, I, I, I knew that area <laughs> rather well. I'm sure it's changed a little bit since I was there. Lots of nice sake shops, very old sake shops. Wonderful. What's the weather like at the moment? Is it cold in Tokyo? Very cold today. Yeah, almost uh, one degree. Mm. Oh, okay. So colder than London, in fact. Okay, but it's been up and down, to be honest with you. Today, you're going to, to talk to us um, um, about kura, about breweries. Yes. Yeah? Sake is made. And then you will connect with uh, the sake brewery, uh, Shiratake, Shirataki Sake Brewery in Niigata, uh, in, in, in Japan. Thank you very much. Um, maybe I can, I can hand over to you. Um, yeah. Uh, 
and you'll guide us through. Thank you so much. And I'll, I will I will join up with you later. Thank you very much. Wonderful. Yes. Yeah. So as uh, Simon explained, um, I have visited, well, it's not that many breweries, there, considering there are so many in Japan, but um, I do like visiting sake breweries. It is one of the things that uh, hooked me into sake. And I think actually, you know, um, there is a lot more to know about a sake brewery. Many people really don't know what a sake brewery is. I mean, what do you imagine when you think about a sake brewery? Do you imagine a factory or um, something different? So the Japanese word for sake brewery is sakagura or kura for short. And a kura is Japanese. Uh, it basically means warehouse or storehouse originally. And I think it would be fair to say that's how many sake breweries kind of evolved. Um, so traditionally, kura were built from stone, mud, or timber, or as is most common with sake breweries, a construction called dozo, uh, which is white, a white building with earthen walls. Um, this construction is both fireproof and maintains the temperature inside perfectly, which of course is perfect for storing things like rice, um, but it's also perfect for producing things like soy sauce, miso, and of course, sake. Um, in the olden days, um, the original kura were actually symbols for shogun, uh, symbols of wealth. And this can be seen in an old Japanese idiom, uh, kura o tateru, which literally means to achieve wealth. Uh, in the olden days, uh, rice was a currency. It was used to pay taxes. And many breweries actually started off um, being asked by the local uh, governor to use surplus rice to make sake, to pay taxes to the uh, daimyo or the clan leaders. Uh, traditionally, sake breweries are these white-walled dozo buildings. But in recent years, um, the inside of a brewery can offer a variety of different architecture and building styles. For example, I once visited a brewery which has an old ship's mast uh, from when the brewery's ancestors helped rescue sailors from a shipwreck just off the coast from their town. In traditional Kura, though, um, my eyes are always drawn to the roof. Sadly, I don't have any photographs to show you. I'm sorry about that, but it is quite fascinating. They make the roof using a construction style called Kikumi, which doesn't use any screws or nails. Instead, the wooden beams are slotted together, a bit like, uh, has anyone played Jenga? It's a bit like a game of Jenga. Um, the roofs are already, or always, sorry, the roofs are also interesting to look at from the outside. Uh, ceramic tiles called kawara help fireproof the building and disperse rainwater away from the walls. More expensive kura have this crisscross patterned wall called a namako kabe, or it means sea cu cucumber wall. Um, it reminds people of the sea creature. Uh, the sea cucumber, which is a local delicacy here in Japan, but personally, I don't recommend it. Um, again, that's designed to keep water away from the building. Inside the actual traditional uh, sakagura, you will find a lot of wooden equipment and tools. And the aroma of the traditional kura is really amazing. I love the rustic aroma, which reminds you a bit of Japanese shrines, if you've ever visited one of those. It's a bit like incense, almost. Due to its construction, the inside of the kura is very dark. Um, I read that uh, in the old days, people used to shut up children inside the kura as a form of punishment. Um, but actually, if you can steal the courage to do so, walking around a brewery at night is quite a special spiritual experience. You can really appreciate how brewers must feel being shut away in these buildings for a long time. It's actually not that bad. Rie mentioned, uh, talked about the water as being an essential ingredient in sake brewing. Uh, there is a saying that where you find good quality, ah, next slide, thank you. There is a saying that where you find good quality clear water, ah, sorry, no, go back one slide. You were on the right place before. We're talking about water. Thank you. There is a saying that where you find good quality clear water, you will find sake breweries. Indeed, many breweries choose their location because of the access to good quality water. Many breweries actually have wells inside the brewery grounds, which they use to pump up the water from underground tributaries that carry the water from nearby mountains. Next slide, please.
Next slide. Thank you. The chimney is also something that I really like. It's a, it's a symbol of many traditional sake breweries, harking back to the old days when breweries used coal powered burners or boilers. These days, while the chimneys are no longer used because they often get damaged in earthquakes and a bit hard to maintain, um, if you do find a brewery that has a chimney, definitely snap a photograph. I think it's quite cool. Next slide, please. Traditional breweries are full of history and culture. The problem with these old brewery buildings is that they are not really very really they are not really suitable for brewing large volumes of sake, and you cannot brew all year round, and it restricts the installation of machinery, and of course they are hard to maintain. And although they are extremely fireproof, they're not impervious. So throughout history, some breweries have been destroyed by fire or earthquakes. Therefore, not every brewery has these traditional Kura buildings. Some have built more modern structures to make more sake. But many breweries still have their old buildings, even if they're not being used for brewing. Perhaps they've been repurposed into a restaurant, museum, or shop. I like to refer to the Sakagura as a temple or shrine of sake brewing. Whether the building is modern or traditional, the inner sanctum, if you like, of this temple is the Koji Muro. Next slide, please. The special room where the Koji mold is grown onto steamed rice. The old ones resemble something like a Swedish sauna house. It is a sacred place where only brewers can enter during the brewing season. Next slide, please. This is to keep bacteria and other microbes out of the room. This is the Koji Muro in the photograph. The bacteria used to make natto, the smelly fermented soybeans, which again, you know, you might like or you might hate, it's a bit like Marmite, is stronger than the Koji mold. And so brewers are not allowed to eat natto during the entire brewing season. In addition to the Koji Muro, there are a number of special rooms. The Motoba is where the fermentation starter is made. The Shikomiba is where the sake is fermented. There is also sometimes a special room for pressing the sake called josoba. And many breweries also have this room called a kaishoba, where the team gathers in the morning and night to discuss the day's brewing. Next slide, please. This is a kamidana. It means God shrine. Many breweries are protected by gods. There are two gods for sake brewing. Uh, the main one is called Matsuo, and it's a female god. And so many brewers pray in front of this shrine um, before they start brewing to pray for a successful brewing season. Next slide, please. This is a sugidama. It's a ball of cedar leaves, which the breweries hang outside to tell people that the new sake is ready to purchase. And this ball of cedar leaves, the leaves naturally change color uh, throughout the year. And as they turn a brown color, that is reflecting the maturation of the sake inside the bottle. So it's thought that when the ball turns a brown color, the sake is ready to consume. And many breweries have beautiful gardens as well, as shown in this photograph. Some breweries have medicine trees called keaki, which can be up to 400 years old or older, and they often are regarded as power spots. Some breweries operate in the traditional monastic style, which means that brewers live, sleep, eat, and work together throughout the brewing season, and they don't see their families during this time. There will be special living quarters on site for this purpose. Um, not all breweries still do this tradition, but many do. Next slide, please. So this is a photograph of the rituals that a lot of breweries do where they pray before starting brewing and they pray after finishing brewing. Next slide, please. There are currently 1,405 sakagura in Japan. Not all of them still brew sake though. 1% of these are large producers that brew in large industrial modern facilities using machines as opposed to making by hand. The rest are very small boutique breweries that many in, that actually use traditional buildings. 50% of all the sake in Japan is made by the large brewers. The remaining 50% is made by the smaller breweries. Right now, uh, premium sake uh, is being made in larger quantities because that is what the demand is for. Most of the large breweries, as you can see on the map, can be found in Kyoto and Hyogo. Hence, that is why these prefectures are the top two for production volume, which we can see on the next slide, please. 
many breweries, many prefectures have lots of breweries because their topography is perfect for brewing sake. For example, maybe they have a port for easy distribution or a railway like Hiroshima, which isn't on these slides, but that's also a, a very big sake producing area. But one of the big sake producing areas, of course, is Niigata. And today's brewery is based in Niigata. So let me talk a little bit about Niigata. Uh, Niigata has the most breweries in Japan. It is also the third for production volume. In the, 19th, in the 1980s, it created a boom for clear, dry styles of sake called Tande Karakuchi, using uh, the indigenous variety of sake specific rice developed in the area called Gohyaku Mangoku. Well, that's enough from me about Kura. It's time to meet today's brewery. Simon. Over to you. Thank you very much, Chris. We have a, a video, first of all, showing us the work of the Shira Taki Brewery in Niigata. We will leave you to watch this. It's uh, it's 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 really quite short. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Very interesting. And as you mentioned, we, we are now able to go over to uh, Niigata, to the Shirataki Brewery in Yuzawa in, in Niigata. And we have two special guests uh, joining us. Thank you very much. Hello, yes. So Yuzawa, of course, in Niigata, I mean, for me, I, I, can, I can imagine what it's like right there now as the train which goes to Tsubame Sanjo in Niigata Prefecture. Tsubame Sanjo, we've worked with metal workers there quite, uh, quite a lot at Japan House London. And as you come out of the mountain at uh, Yuzawa, suddenly you're in this wonderful snowscape, this, uh, this, this landscape uh, connected to... Uh, Kawabata Yasunari's the snow country, of course. So I can imagine it's pretty cold and quite snowy there at the moment. Joining us from the Shirataki Brewery uh, are the president, uh, Mr. Takahashi, and the master brewer, Mr. Matsumoto. Nice to meet you. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, Mr. Takahashi, maybe uh, you could introduce uh, yourself. ちょっと高さんの方からご紹介お願いいたします。はい、皆さんこんにちは。え、新潟県にあります白滝酒造社長高橋と申します。え、私たちの高倉は約160年続いている酒蔵でして、え、ま、家族経営で私が、え、私の
uh, over to you. Thank you very much. And I'll rejoin you uh, at the end. Thank you. Thank you, Simon. So I'm going to ask some questions. Well, it's kind of like an interview with the brewery. There might be a slight delay between the translations of the Japanese and English, but bear with us. Um, so we've, we've just heard about the brewery. We've had a little introduction of the brewery. I'd like to learn more about the location where they are. What is the connection with the brewery and the location? この蔵のあるロケーション、場所について少しお話しいただければと思います。どこにあって、どうしてそこにあるんでしょうか。はい、えっ、ー、と私どもの蔵のある場所は新潟県の湯沢町というところです。えー、この町は新潟県と群馬県の県境にある町で、えー、冬の冬には大変たくさんの雪が降る豪雪地帯で有名な町です。Our brewery is in the town of Yuzawa. It is on the border between, between Niigata Prefecture and Gunma Prefecture, and it's known for having a lot of snow in the winter. えー、地下水を汲み上げて、えー、酒造りをしているしています。We get about four meters of snow in the winter, which then in the spring melts, and you get this lovely clear groundwater which we draw up to make our sake. So the connection is the water, and、uh, that's the connection. But what was the reason for starting to brew? Was it just the water, or was there another reason? じゃあ水が大事ということなんですけれども、ここで酒を作り始めたのは水だけが理由なんでしょうか他に何か理由ありましたかはい。で、先ほど言った通り、もちろん、きれいな水が豊富にあるので、酒造りに適している土地だということが一つと、あともう一つは昔、昔、えー、ここ新潟県から東京に行く旅人が通るここ、昔の街道沿いに蔵がありました。新潟から東京に出ていくときに、ここから高い山、あの峠を越えていかなくてはいけないんですけれども、その峠の手前で、えーまあ、休む宿場町として栄えていました。でそこの旅人たちに、えー、お酒を振る舞っていたというのが始まりだというふうに聞いています。Of course, one reason is that we have all this abundant, beautiful water. But the, the other reason is that our town、uh, flourished as a post town on the road from Niigata to Tokyo. This was where、uh, travelers would pass through on the way to Tokyo, and this was where they would stop to rest before going over the mountains.、Uh, and so, my understanding is that they started brewing sake here、uh, to give to the travelers. That makes a lot of sense. A lot of breweries、um, I know started in these kind of postal towns and kind of served as a, you know, which serve as a pit stop for travelers and they sort of serve their sake to the travelers and that's how they started brewing. That makes a lot of sense.、Um, what about the rice? Do you grow your own rice、uh, or do you, how, how do you source the rice? Because it, that area I think is very famous for growing rice. Am I, am I correct? でお米の方はどうでしょうか確かにあのお米が多く作られている地域ではあると思うんですけれども、えー、ご自分で作ってらっしゃいますかあの会社として独自でお米の栽培はしておりませんけれどもあの一部の品種では、えー、契約農家さんにあのお米を実際作っていただいておりまして、えー、その中でもまあ刈り取り、まあ、うんと田植えから刈り取りまで。まあ、ポイントポイントで実際に補助に足を運ばせていただくケースもございます。We don't grow the rice ourselves as a company, but we do have it, some of the, the rice that we use grown for us,、uh, and that enables us to, to keep an eye on it right from the planting through to the harvesting、um, to, to, to monitor the, the rice. Okay, fantastic. Um, let's just stop there for a sec. And what we'd like to do is we'd like to go to one of the rooms in the brewery.、Um, it's called the Shikomiba. I did briefly mention it in my little、uh, introduction to Kura. 
Uh, this is situated on top of the fermentation tank. So maybe we can have a look in a tank and see what's going on with uh, sake at the moment. So can we go over to uh, camera number two? Okay, there we are. So you can see it's a very clean room. Look at that, sparkling floors. It's quite a modern uh, looking room as well, I think. They use a lot of machines, uh, Shirataki Sake Brewery. Um, let's have a look inside the tank. Just the tank no naka o nozoite mi mashou ka. Ooh, lovely, lovely. There it is, bubbling happily away. What stage is this tank at in the fermentation process? This tank is at what stage? This tank is at what stage? Uh, this morami is four days uh, on the fourth day of Shikomi. Oh, okay. So I noticed that your brewery is quite modern looking, um, not kind of, you know, like the traditional sake breweries, which I talked a little bit about. So I assume that you upgraded the brewery. Uh, when did this happen and, and what was the reason for upgrading the brewery? え、そちらのえ、コラがとても、こう、モダンなようなんですけれども、私が先ほど話してたえ、そちらがとても、こう、our new modern brewery um, was uh, was built around 30 years ago. That's when we started. Uh, that's when we that's when we upgraded. で、ちょうどその時、あの、私たちの、え、主力商品であります、ジョージ水のことしてる商品が、ま、東京、関東で、大変売れるようになりまして、で、どちらかというと全国的なスーパーですとか、コンビニエンスストアでの販売が増えていったんですけども、やっぱりそういう売り場になってくると、どうしてもこう品質管理というか衛生管理が必要になってきます。え、まあ
そうですねあのジョーゼ・ミズオートシューというブランドはあの今から30年前にあの発売したブランドですでその発売当時もやっぱりターゲットとしてはあの若い女性の方に飲んでいただきたいということで、えー、スタートしたブランドですで、えー、30年経った今でもやっぱり若い女性あとはその日本酒は飲み慣れてないんだけれども飲み,たい飲み始めるまあ、入門のお酒ブランドという位置づけで、えー、私どもを捉えています。なので、デザインもすごくこうモダンで、あの若い人たちが手に取りやすいようなデザインにすることを心がけています。You're right. The Jose Mizunogotoshi brand,、uh, when it launched 30 years ago, was targeted towards young women.、Um, and even now, 30 years later,、um, It's, it's something that we market towards young women and also newcomers to sake who aren't used to sake but who maybe want to try it.、Um, and so the design is very modern、uh, and it's a design that appeals to young people. The area where you're based is very famous for skiing and I think it's very popular with tourists. I know Simon talked about that. And I was wondering how much of your sake you actually sell locally and how you've been affected by the, the,、um, the virus, which we won't name.、Um, At, you know, how does the local sales compare now with, say, maybe 50 years ago? y u z a w a was a ski de to demo yume de, Kanko Kaku ga oi to mon des kere domo, so tira de tsukut de la sal nihon shu a dore kurai no jimoto de no made de rindes ka. So ste ma no kon virus no ekyo mo kiki stein des kere domo, gojo ne mai to kurabe de, local de no made de rindes ka, yo so de no made de rindes ka, hiritz wa kawa te mas ka. そうですね、あの昔はどちらかというともう新潟県内での販売がもうほとんどだったんですけれどもあ今はあ私たちの,の販売の割合はあ、まあ、この「ジョージ水のことし」というブランドが東京で販売したこともあるんですけれども新潟県内が約 10% で新潟県外が 90% です。でうち当社の全体の出荷量の約半分が東京を中心とした首都圏での販売になっています。私たちの蔵は新潟県の中で一番東京に近い場所にありますのでどちらかというと主な販売先が東京になっています。Well, it used to be that our sake was mostly sold in Niigata,、uh, but what with the launch of j o s e m i z u n o g o t o s h i being sold in Tokyo,、um, now 10%,、uh, I would say, is, is sold in Niigata, and the remaining 90% is, is elsewhere.、Uh, and of the total sales, about 50% is in Tokyo.、Um, we are the closest Kura to Tokyo、uh, in, in Niigata. So it's,、uh, it's an obvious place for us to, to be selling. Wow.、Uh, Simon, are we okay to continue? Or... I, I think we, we, we have, we're running out of a little bit of time, actually. Okay. I was, I was wondering.、Um, it, We have several questions coming through. So I wonder、yeah. some of them are, are, are going,、uh, we can direct definitely to, to, to Shirataki. Would, would, that be, would that be okay? Yeah, absolutely. And hopefully that, that might even cover some of the stuff that I was going to ask as well. So yeah, go ahead. Okay, wonderful. Thank you very much indeed. Chris, thank you so much.、Uh, Mr. Takahashi, Mr. Matsumoto, thank you so much for, for that. I, I apologize for stepping in here, but we do have lots of questions. And I would like to invite Yoshitake san to come back as well, if you would. Yoshitake san, thank you so much. Hello again.、Um, I would like to start the, the questioning, if we, if we may. We, we do have some for, for Mr. Takahashi and Mr. Matsumoto. The first one is What is the brewing season? And this is from Philip. それはですね、あの9月から仕込みを開始しまして、えー、仕込みが終わるのが例年です、大体4月末で、お酒を全部絞り終わるのが、えー、5月末っていうような、そんな具合です。Uh, and then the, the sake will,、um, have, will be pressed by,、uh, by the end of May. Wonderful, thank you. As, as, I, as I said, we do have lots of questions. Wonderfully, the JSS members have been, have been answering some of the questions that have been coming through as we've been going along as well. So, thank you so much for that.
I have another question for uh, Mr. Takahashi and Mr. Matsumoto. This is from Nikki. Um, it's been mentioned that a lot of wooden utensils and equipment are involved in the making of sake. Is this reason similar to the reason in cheese making, whereby wooden utensils carry the unique mold? Uh, and in the case of sake, uh, the mold for the koji, and that this can transfer between batch to batch. Cheese wow. comes up a lot, doesn't it, today? That's a good question. やはりあの、先ほどもありましたように、ま、I, I suppose there is a, a sense in which if you don't use the traditional um, tools, um, the dozo, if, if you, you don't use the dozo kura, yes, and the dozo kura, then, then it's harder to replicate the. Uh, it's harder to re replicate some of, of the, the, um, the effect. But in our case, as we've said, we've modernized, uh, we've automated, um, we prioritize hygiene. Um, and so we clean everything thoroughly uh, before we, we start the process so that everything is clean and hygienic. Uh, and uh, that's what we use to make our sake. Yeah, I think it could be seen as a negative thing or a positive thing. It depends on the brewery and it, it's sort of not every brewery sees that like, natural bacteria, microbes as a good thing. Um, yeah. Okay, thank you. I have, I have another question, if I may, um, uh, also to uh, Shirataki uh, Brewery. Um, is there a special rice that is used or can any type of rice suffice in the production? えっとですね、白滝酒造ではあの新潟県が独自にあの酒米を育ててます。ポシタンレというお米ですけれども、そちらのお米を使った商品がいくつかございます。For uh, for our brewery for Shirataki uh, Sake Brewery, we do uh, use a, a particular type of rice that is grown here in Niigata, and that's what we use for, for our sake. It's called koshitanne. Yeah. It's, you know, I mentioned gohyaku mangoku in my uh, introduction. So one of the parents of koshitanne is gohyaku mangoku, and the other parent is Yamada Nishiki. Perhaps you've heard of Yamada Nishiki. Okay, thank you. Um, thank you very much. We have a, a question now. Maybe I can ask Yoshitake-san this, this, this question. Um, this has come from Alan. And he's talking about something which I have actually right in front of me, quite by coincidence. Um, he said, can you tell us something about the use of the masu, the small box? I mean, of course, we used a picture of a, a masu uh, and with a glass <laughs> it, uh, for, for this particular event. Um, he mentions that when he was in Japan, some bars would provide a glass inside a masu and then fill the glass until it overflowed into the masu. Uh, maybe you could tell us something about this. Is it is it a tradition? Okay, thank you. I know how popular and everybody wants to drink out of masu. And the masu actually, rather than just a, a sake cup, it was made for the measurement of the rice or any anything. And it is co uh, it contains one go. It means 180 milliliter. So that was used when we scoop the um, rice or water or everything. So it was a measurement unit. But as well, when we drink sake, this was particularly used because often it's made by the Japanese cedar, which gives a very punchy, witty nose, and it reflects. 
So that's why I like a taru sake. And it's not only just the sake, but it's the smell and uh, you know, aroma of the uh, wood makes you really feel really good. And uh, they are often used at the uh, ceremony, like a kagami biraki. Um, rather than everyday use, it is for some special occasions we use it. So, did it answer? <laughs> I hope so. Thank you very much indeed. It certainly answered it for me. Thank you very much indeed. And I always look forward to, 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 to that particular uh, method of serving. Uh, maybe, um, Chris, maybe I can ask you this question. We have um, um, a question here from Shannon. And it says, is there much of a trend towards craft sake brewing and home brewed sake as we have seen in craft beer in recent years? Sadly, it's illegal here in Japan. It's completely banned. Um, even mixing like a, a fermented beverage with fruit or something like that is completely banned here in Japan. Um, so the answer is no, but uh, historically, um, yes. Um, there was, uh, sake actually started being made in the home. Um, it's called doburoku. Um, you can still get a license to make doburoku, but it's very difficult uh, in Japan. But that's about it as far as craft brewing is concerned. Okay. Thank you very much. And we have um, not much time left, but we do have this interesting question here. Um, I noticed, Yoshitake-san, this is one thing uh, that you mentioned uh, about food pairing. We have lots of questions about food pairing, and maybe it's a little, a little difficult to answer all of them. But maybe quickly, you mentioned cheese, for example. Um, maybe you could, what, uh, what cheese uh, what, uh, which sake, sorry, would you recommend to go with with, with cheese for, for those of us here in, in the UK? World? Yes, I mean, like, happily, this is uh, like a cheese academy is working on that as well. But it's a, a very, one thing about the sake is anything really salty matches with the uh, sake. And uh, sake, uh, cheese has a lot of um, cheese, but it's a soft cheese or hard cheese like uh, Parmesan or you know, all those stuff, it can be easy to go with a lighter type of the sake, such as even the sparkling or even light um, ginjo, daiginjo type. But as it matures, we need uh, something a little bit more stronger. Well, this is all also depending on which one you respect. If, if you really want to respect the cheese wise, you will never overwhelmed by the sake. But, but usually, strong sake, we need a strong, uh, strong cheese, we need a strong sake, like aged sake or full body sake, jumai, would be a perfect one. Wonderful, thank you very much. Um, we do have maybe one more question before we finish. Uh, whoever would like to answer, I'll throw it open there. Are there any, and this is interesting, are there any Japanese sake breweries elsewhere in the world? I use the word Japanese sake breweries here, or are they all located exclusively in Japan? And, and if so, is that the choice to preserve the authenticity or is it to meet the standards of production? Very briefly, um, I know Yoshitake-san, you might know about something in the UK, about sake in the UK. We have sake in the UK as well, don't we? A sake made in UK. Yeah. Yes, we have, um, obviously, the first one was a kampai, uh, you know, craft small brewers run by the Japanese uh, English people. Also, Japanese brewer came here, it's called a big dojima brewery. So major big ones. But in Europe, we have, a, I don't know, maybe 13 or, uh, you know, big breweries that are established now. So sake is not only now made in Japan, but it's lots of sake made overseas. Wonderful, thank you very much. Uh, that is all we have time for, I'm afraid. It's very quick. <laughs> I do I apologize. Know. There's so many more questions and so much more to know. Um, this is uh, from Maki, uh, Yoshitake-san, Chris-san, Shirataki, uh, Shuzo no Takahashi-san, to Matsumoto-san written in Japanese. Um, thank you very much for the fantastic presentations and explanations. I've learned a lot about sake and now I really want to drink sake as soon as this event finishes. I wonder what time zone you're in is my comment. <laughs> a little early for me here, I'm afraid. But thank you very much. I think that does sum it up. Um, 
Thank you to uh, JSS, uh, to the Japan uh, Sake and Shochu Makers Association for uh, partnering with us on this event. Thank you so much. Thank you so much to Yoshitake-san. Thank you very much for joining us from London. For Chris, Chris Hughes, from joining us from Tokyo. Thank you very much indeed. And Mr. Takahashi and Master Brewer Matsumoto for joining us from Yuzawa in Niigata Prefecture. Uh, and thank you very much indeed. Is it snowing in, in, in Yuzawa at the moment? <laughs> yep, a lot of snow this year. It snows every day right now. <laughs> it's a nice, it's a nice, it's a nice view though. Thank you so much for, for joining us. Thank you every everybody for who joined us uh, this morning here to watch and to listen to uh, the presentations. Uh, following this event, all attendees will receive a feedback questionnaire by email. Please fill this in with your comments. Thank you, of course, to Beth Ann Jones for doing a splendid job interpreting between uh, all of us. Thank you so much indeed for, for your help there. Uh, it's most appreciated. Um, we do have a couple more events coming up soon. Of course, this is the first in a series about uh, Japanese drinks uh, with the Japan Sake and Shochu Makers Association. The next one is on the 27th of January. Discover Shochu, a distillery visit and introduction. This is closer to my heart. Um, or of course I was in Southern Japan when I lived in Japan and Shochu is very much uh, what, what I know about more than, than sake. Uh, we also have uh, Japanese drinks at home, sake pairings and Shochu cocktails. This is on the 3rd of February. And we also have in connection with our exhibition for which uh, we had to close unfortunately because of lockdown, but we are still continuing with associated events. It's Architecture for Dogs, Conversations on Architecture with Atelier Bauwau and MVRDV, who were both makers uh, in the Architecture for Dogs exhibition. That's on the 29th of January in partnership with the London Festival of Architecture. And you can also see the Architecture for Dogs uh, exhibition uh, virtually from our website. Uh, thank you very much indeed. It's been a wonderful event today. I've learned an awful lot. Thank you so much to mm -hmm. everybody involved. We look forward to uh, seeing you all again and stay safe. I know that we've done this under difficult circumstances in London and in Japan. So thank you very much. It's very much appreciated. Uh, special thank you to, to everybody in, in Yuzawa. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Stay safe. <laughs>